Hello and welcome to my seventh video in using Blender 2.6. Today I'm going to be talking about using and adding modifiers to objects. We can use and add modifiers um, to do lots of, the, of different cool things to our meshes. You'll find modifiers by going over here to your buttons window, or your, it's actually called your properties window now, and going to the little tab that looks like a wrench, it has a picture of a wrench on it. So I'll click on that, and this menu, add modifiers, is where we can add uh, one of many different modifiers, but they all do very different things. I'm going to be showing you how to use a modifier to model only one half of an object, like a half of a person's face or half of a person's body, and it'll automatically create the other half for you. Uh, it'll essentially create a mirror halfway or cutting all the way down through the middle of your object or character. So without further ado, I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab with the object selected, and I'll select faces, and I'm going to go a, A, select all, and I'll press W and subdivide. I'll switch that up to two so it looks like a Rubik's Cube because there's two cuts going through each direction. And I'm going to press A to deselect all, and I'm going to do a loop cut, so I'll press one to go to my front view, and I want to cut it right down the middle. So I'm going to press Control R, and now I'm going to cut it right down the middle and right click to make it go down. The, uh, or split it in the exact center of that of those faces. And now I'm going to select vertices and press A to deselect all. Whoops, I must have scaled that a little bit. Press vertices select mode and I'm going to press B. And B is box select. So if you're in edit mode or in any object or an object mode uh, and you press B, it gives you lines going all the way through your window, um, conversing at your or meeting at your uh, at your cursor. So I'm going to click and drag after I've pressed B, and that'll box select. Now it's a little bit laggy. You'll notice that if you press B, then immediately go and select all of your objects. It'll maybe not select exactly what you want it to. So it'll just give it an extra half beat or half second to uh, catch up with you. There, I've selected my vertices. It looks like it's scaled a little bit again. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'll press B again. Maybe it's just kind of looking like that. Yeah, I think that's just an optical illusion. Okay. Um, but you'll see if I orbit my view that it, um, it only selected the front faces, and that's a problem. I want to select all of the vertices um, throughout my, through my entire object looking from the front. So if I press this uh, little button down here, and if I hover over it, it says limit selection to visible. In other words, limit selection to the visible things that I can see when I'm selecting. So if, if I press, uh, or if I'm in vertice select mode, and I don't have this turned on, which I don't right now, I'm only going to be selecting the ones that I can see, the visible ones. If I click this, uh, you can't see any difference right now because I'm looking at it exactly from the front. But if I orbit, you'll see that I can actually see all the background ones now because I've selected it or pressed that button. So now if I go to my front view by pressing 1, I'm going to press A to deselect all, and B again, and box select all of those vertices. I don't select the ones in the middle, and now it's like the entire left-hand side of the object. So I'll press X or delete, and I'm going to select vertices. Now, the, kind of the golden rule here is if you are selecting vertices, if you're in vertices select mode, and you selected the vertices to delete, when you press X or delete, select the same sub-object sub part that you selected originally. So I selected vertices, so I'll delete vertices. There we go. So now I have half a cube, um, and I'm going to go back and do uh, object mode, so I'll press tab, and I'll go back over here to my wrench tab, the modifiers tab, and I'm going to add a modifier to that object called mirror. There we go, and we add a, the mirror object, you'll see immediately that the cube uh, is once again a full cube, and you'll also see that there's options for the mirror modifier. I'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see everything in there. Um, if your mirror isn't going left and right, we were in this case, but let's say that you deleted the top half of your cube, leaving the bottom half of your cube, cube, cube excuse me, um, you could change the axis on which it was mirroring, but X is the right one, and so we can leave it. So now I have my cube, and you're probably wondering why uh, or what benefit that did us. Well, if I press tab to go back into edit mode, You'll see that only half of my cube, the half that was left, is now editable. 
I can't select, like, there's no vertices or edges or faces selectable on the mirrored side, the side that isn't really there. But I can select the faces or edges or vertices on the side that was still there, the side that I didn't delete. So I'm going to select uh, the face in the middle, oops, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, limit selection to visible button off so I can only select the ones that I'm looking at. And I'm going to drag the middle face out and maybe this top face up and maybe that front face out. And again, kind of like my last video, I'm just moving the middle faces out, except this time I'm not scaling them. And I'm going to select the corner vertices like I did in the last video. But now we've got a little bit of a difference here. In the last video, uh, to make our cube more round, we selected eight vertices. And because we had all eight in, uh, selected in a cube, so we selected not only the, the four that I selected just now, but we selected the other four that are now mirrored, it scaled in towards the middle of all of them, all eight vertices. And that was good. Uh, but this time it's going to be a little different because there isn't any vertices selected on the other side, uh, not in reality anyways. Um, so when we press S, they're only going to scale in towards each other, in other words, towards the center of those four. Uh, and unlike before, they won't scale into the middle, because there aren't any on the other side that are really selected to scale towards. So I'm going to change my, um, I'm not even sure really what it's called, uh, I'll find it right now, the pivot center. So it's for use for scaling and rotating uh, and moving. Um, and right now it's set to the medium point. So when we press S, it scales towards the medium point. In other words, the kind of the average middle of all of these, which is, uh, if we look at this object from the side, right kind of where that dot is, although not in the middle of the cube, but just kind of exactly lined up with those. So on the x-axis, it's right there, uh, but it's right in the middle. So it's not going inwards like we want it to do. So I'm going to change my uh, pivot center to the, well, we could do it to the bounding box center or the 3D cursor, which would actually work right now because the 3D cursor is right in the middle of the cube as well. Uh, but I'm going to select um, to active element. Let's see what that does. No, nope, that's not going to be the one that we want. We will, in fact, do 3D cursor in this case because I haven't clicked anywhere to move my 3D cursor. Now if I press S and scale in, you'll see that it's going towards the mirror, which is what we want. Good. So just like my last video, um, I'm going to keep going and making this into kind of like a character. Ooh, and you'll see now that I changed that away from medium point, the gizmo is no longer on the... Uh, face that I select, it's always going to be on that 3D cursor. So I'll go ahead and change that back to medium point. And there we go, now my, my gizmo is actually on the object that I'm selecting. And I might scale that down. Whoops! Good point! Um, when you have a mirror, and it mirrors both halves, um, it is possible to drag a face or an edge or a vertice away from the mirror, creating a hole in your object, or across your mirror, uh, creating an overlap, which is really bad. So there's a way, of, or a really easy way of solving that by clicking on the clipping button uh, under your mirror modifier options. What clipping will do is it'll stop you from dragging out or across your mirror, um, and that's a good thing to do as soon as you uh, apply the mirror modifier. In fact, what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and delete my mirror modifier, and I'll go ahead and add it again, mirror, and I'll select clipping right away. Okay, so that's what I should have done at the very beginning of my tutorial. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scale this down, and maybe in a little bit, and I'll extrude my nose, and I can keep going like before to create a character's head. Uh, that's all I'm going to show you today. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.